Right. So, uh, this says that uh, what is the advantage of uh, this kind of a theorem? See this uh, advantage of interpreting Riemann integral as limit is that now if you want to look at uh, the algebra of integrable functions f is integrable, g is integrable, then you want to look at whether f plus g is integrable or not. Right. If you want to go by upper and lower sums, then you have to relate the upper sums of f plus g with the upper sum of f and with that of g. That becomes a bit difficult, one can do that. But now it is being the limit, if I take f plus g, so what will be integral of f plus g? That will be limit of integrals, uh, limit s p f plus g, right. But the limit split, limit of f plus g is equal to limit of f plus limit of g. So, that is the advantage that sometimes this uh, way of proving uh, that is integrable is useful uh, to get the result. So, uh, one proves the theorem like this. If f and g are integrable, then f plus g is integrable and uh, integral of f plus g is integral f plus integral g. So, this is where the limit operations because the left hand side will be a limit of norm p going to 0 right and that splits into limit of SPF with respect to f, SPF with because, because what is the Riemann sum f plus g at some point t i into the length. So, that splits into two parts. So, limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits. So, using that one proves all these results uh, as a consequence of that limiting operation that if f and g are integrable then alpha times f is also integrable and alpha comes out because in the limit, limit of alpha times something is alpha times the limit and similarly f and g, right. So, if you look at s p f with respect to f will be less than or equal to the Riemann sum with respect to g because f is less than g, right. The value at a point of t i of f will be less than. So, using that uh, criteria of integrability one proves these things and this is also uh, not uh, difficult at all saying that if f is integrable in a to b then it is also integrable between a and c in between c is a point in between plus the integral between c to b because the partition of the whole interval can be put it as a partition of a to c and c to b introducing the point c in between ok. And this uh, um, is because for an f uh, which is uh, integrable, integral may be negative ok. So, absolute value of the integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value ok. So, again when you look at the limits right s p f you look at the uh, look at the uh, absolute value of the Riemann sums. So, that will be less than or equal to mod f at into the length. So, this becomes obvious in that case. So, using that that is the very useful result uh, in proving integrability. And not only that it frees uh, uh, the notion of integrability from function being bounded ok. Historically it is of great importance because that gave a lot of uh, interest in uh, looking at what is called Fourier series problem or uh, in probability and statistics you will find what is a characteristic function uh, of a distribution coming and looking at uh, their Fourier series problems ok. So, this is uh, integration. So, what we have done is we are given a function f on an interval a b to r, we defined the notion of geometrically the notion of area below the graph of the function right and that we interpreted as via lower sums, upper sums or via the Riemann sums. There are some situations where you can 
extend this notion of integral, see f on a b to r, f is bounded, the domain of the function is a bounded interval. You can extend this notion when either the domain is not a bounded interval or the function is not bounded on the bounded interval. So, one can define the notion of integral. Okay. So, that is called uh, the one extension of Riemann integral and that is called the improper integration. Okay. So, uh, one looks at the function defined either on an interval which is not bounded, right? but the function is bounded or the function is defined on the interval a b which is bounded, but the function is not bounded itself on that interval. Right? So, these two situations can be handled in some cases. So, let us look at some example. For example, look at the function defined on the bounded interval 0 to 1. Okay, open at 0, close at 1, f of 1 over square root x. Okay. So, at every point bigger than 0, this function is defined. Okay. And what is the integral? Integral of 1 over square root x from any point c, if you take a point c bigger than 0. So, that is equal to 1 over x raised to power minus 1 by 2. So, that uh, is the integral. Okay. Now, in this the interesting thing happens if I let c go to 0, c is bigger than 0. If I let come c closer to 0, this integral has a limit. When c goes to 0, this goes to 2. Right? So, what we are saying is even though the function is becoming larger and larger as you come closer to 0, right? still I can think of saying what is the area of this 1 over square root x on in the interval 0 to 1, area below the graph of the function. Now, it is becoming very large near 0. Okay? So, this is the situation where we can define, so this limit will be called as the integral of 1 over square root x in the interval 0 to 1. So, here this is a situation where the function is becoming bigger and bigger in a bounded interval. Let us look at another example, look at this function f of x is minus 1 to the power n divided by n and the function is defined on a infinite interval 0 to infinity, x is positive. Okay. If x lies between n minus 1 to n, then the function is defined this way. Okay. So, uh, we would like to know, can we say something like the function has some integral from um, 0 to infinity? unbounded interval. So, what we do? We have only defined the notion of function integral when the function is bounded over a bounded domain. So, let us look at the integral of this from 0 to some point, okay? then it becomes a bounded interval. Okay? So, let us choose a point say i m which is 0 to m and look at the integral of this function in this interval. So, it is a continuous function, uh, piecewise continuous function in that interval. So, what will be the integral? This is defined as constant function in this interval. So, what will be the integral? The value of the function into the length of the interval summation. Okay. Now, this as m, m is the interval i m 0 to m. Now, let us let m go to infinity. Okay. Then, what happens to this series minus 1 to the power n divided by n? Have you come across series in your courses? So, this is a convergent series, okay. this is an alternating series actually. So, this is a convergent series, we will do it again also later on and its sum is equal to minus ln of 2, ln is a log function. So, now the function is defined over the whole uh, interval 0 to infinity which is unbounded, but in every bounded part it is integral is defined. And, and as, as we stretch that interval right to infinity, the limit exists. So in, the, in the earlier case, it was c 0 to 1 and c was being pulled to 0. Right? So, in all these cases, uh, there the function was unbounded, here the function is bounded, 
but the integer the domain is unbounded interval. So, such things are called improper integrals. So, let us make a definition. Let us say i is interval a to infinity, right? And f is a, a bounded function on that. The interval is 1 to infinity, but the function is bounded. So, if I take part of a to something, it will be a bounded function on a bounded interval and suppose that integral exists and as we take the limit of that point going to infinity that also exists, then we can say f is integrable on the interval a to infinity. So, let us uh, define that. So, take a sequence b n of numbers which is increasing to infinity and i n is a to b n. Okay. And suppose f is integrable, r is the symbol Riemann integrable on the interval i n that is a to b n. Okay. If that exists, take the limit of this and suppose that limit is equal to some number is convergent to alpha and that number alpha is independent of the way you go to infinity. Right? It should not depend upon that. Then you say that the function has a integral and that integral is called improper integral of f over the interval i. These are called uh, here the domain of the function is unbounded. So, these are called improper integrals of type 1, where the domain is unbounded, but the function is bounded. The other one which we saw earlier, where the domain is bounded, right? but the function became unbounded and still the integral existed. So, that was this situation a to b right? and from c to b the function is integrable and limit c going to a exists. Then we say this is improper integrable function of type 2. So, domain is bounded, function is unbounded. In the other one, function is bounded, but the domain is unbounded. Okay? These kind of situations arise uh, uh, for functions uh, which are both important in mathematics, probability and statistics, okay? the improper integrals. So, we will give some more examples of this. One way of checking uh, is called comparative comparison test, which says if uh, how to check whether some integral will exist or not. Okay? So, if f is less than or equal to g and if, so saying that the integral a to b is finite, right? that is saying that the improper integral exists. Then, so if integral of uh, the do dominated function improper integral exists, then the of the, uh, the function which is being dominated that also exists. And if this is infinity, okay? If this is infinity, then g being bigger, that will be also. That means, when the improper integral exists, you say it is less than infinity. When it does not exist, you say it is equal to infinity or one uses the word convergent and divergent. Improper integral is convergent, that meaning that integral limit exists. Divergent, okay, so another way of saying. Here, because we are 0, so that is another way of writing. Okay. For example, look at uh, 0 to infinity e raise power minus x square. Here the function e raise power minus x square, right? the interval 0 to infinity that is unbounded. right? So, let us try to analyze this in two parts. We will see e raise power minus x square behaves differently between 0 and uh, infinity. So, let us look at if x is bigger than 1 in this, right? then what is the inequality? e raise power x square is bigger than e raise power x and so e raise power minus x square because the function is e raise power minus x square is less than e raise power minus x. So, this is less than right? and look at the integral 1 to infinity of e raise power minus x. What is that integral? 1 to infinity that means look at integral 1 to some finite quantity of e raise to power minus x and limit of that as that point goes to infinity. So, what will be that integral? 
right. So, that goes to infinity that the other part will go to 0. So, this limit is equal to 1 over e. Is that okay? Integral of e raise power minus x from 1 to some point c, right. Exponential derivative is itself, integral is itself is a negative sign. So, negative, right. So, this integral exists. So, that means e raise power minus x square from 1 to infinity will also exist by comparison theorem because this integral is finite. Okay. So, by comparison test the integral e raise power minus x square will also exist. Okay. And 0 to 1 e raise power minus x square does that exist? The domain is bounded right 0 to 1 e raise power minus x square what is happening to the function? It is a continuous function, right. So, integral exists, we know that integral, that is ordinary integral. So, the integral 0 to infinity will exist, right. And uh, this is something similar to what is called uh, normal distribution, normal density function that will come in statistics. So, that is improper integrals, okay. Right. So, that is one of the uses of improper integrals. Here is another application which we will not uh, go in much into. I want to look at the integral, uh, I, I think I pointed out earlier, look at the integral of 1 over 1 minus t square dt minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, let us try to split. 1 minus t square factorized that is 1 minus t and 1 plus t right and uh, the 1 minus t into 1 plus t, t is between minus 1 to 1. So, what happens to 1 plus t? That is always 1 over 1 minus 1 plus t that square root ok. So, that will be, so this quantity is less than 1 over 1 minus t. So, if between 0 and 1 look at the integral, integral 0 to x f t because this is less than this quantity. So, it is less than or equal to this quantity 0 to x. So, I am trying to look at the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 minus, I am not going to 1 because if I try to go to 1 the function becomes unbounded 1 over 1 minus t, 1 over 1 minus t square root as t goes to 1 it is becoming unbounded function right near 1. So, I should avoid 1. So, to look at 0 to x from 0 to 1 only that integral exists okay? and that always remains less than or equal to 2 because 2 minus something. Okay? So, that means what 0 to x f is non-negative. So, this is an increasing function bounded above so, limit of this 0 to x, x goes to 1 will exist. Are you following? Right? Because 0 to x, non negative quantity, the interval is increasing, is a non negative function, integral will be non negative. So, these quantities are non negative, increasing bounded by 2. So, limit of this will exist. So, this limit exists. Okay? Because this limit exists, right? So, similarly with minus 1 to 1 also the limit exists. So, you can say that this integral exists. Now, the integral is unbounded, that the function is unbounded near the value 1. Okay. Now, because of this, here is one application of this. Look at the integral, this integral just now we said exists minus 1 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus t square. Look at 1 over 1 minus t square that is the derivative of what? 1 over 1 minus x square square root. It is the derivative of sin inverse function. right? <clears throat> so, if I integrate the derivative, if I am able to integrate, I should get back the function. But here the integration is coming via improper integral. Right? When you are away from minus 1 or 1, you are applying fundamental theorem of calculus and getting value of sin x. 
and at the end point it is the limit. So that is also giving you the continuity of the sine inverse function because the way it is defined. So one uh, I will not will not go into this just for uh, uh, the sake of exposure saying that the improper integral can be used. In fact, here we are saying that you define sine inverse as improper integral of its derivative. And once sine inverse is defined, this is defined from minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, what will be the value of sine inverse at the point minus 1? What do you think should be the value? That is right. Now, as such, we have not defined pi by pi or anything. So, we are defining a sine inverse function between minus 1 to 1 taking values in R via integration, right? one proves it is continuous, differentiable and all those properties. It is a continuous function, it is a 1 1 function, it is because what will be the derivative of this 1 over 1 minus t square positive, right? it will be a monotonically increasing function, derivative is nowhere 0, it will be a 1 to 1 on 2 function between minus 1 to 1 to R. What will be the range? If it is a continuous function on minus 1 to 1, a interval, range also should be a close bounded interval. And so it should have a left end point, it should have a right end point. That left end point is called minus pi by 2, and the right end point will be plus pi by 2, because you can see from here it is what is a odd function. Okay. So, this is uh, the way of defining sin inverse, getting what is minus pi by 2, what is pi by 2 and then you invert that function, you get sin function between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 to minus 1 to 1. And if you look at the graph of that sin function, because sin inverse is 1 1 on 2, right? that also is a 1 1 on 2 function. Right, between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and then you extend it periodically everywhere. So, that is a way of defining trigonometric functions and also in between you define what is pi. Okay. We defined pi also uh, via um, sequences, look at the area of the circle. right? So, that was the beginning of our story of saying that a monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above must converge. So, that the area of the inscribed and gons was monotonically increasing and bounded and similarly outside was decreasing. So, this is a, a way of uh, defining, a way of uh, extending Riemann integral when either the domain is not bounded or the function is not bounded. There are some many other functions uh, which in applied mathematics also it comes as some, something called gamma functions, if you have heard about those things, they are all uh, uh, improper integrals. Okay. So, we will not go much into it because we just want to give you an exposure of something uh, called improper integrals as and when it comes to in one or some of the courses, we will study more of them. So, this is one way of uh, extending. Uh, your integral. Uh, 